this is a powerful truth, angels. And uh, we have of LA in a minute, Evan. Do you go by Evan or do you go by... Uh, they usually say the LA in a minute guy. The LA but, in a minute guy, Evan. <laughs> but yeah, Evan. E- Evan, yeah, Evan. Evan hello. Ev- <laughs> hello. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. Evan's a journalist and Evan has a hell of a voice. And Evan uh, has a lot of energy. Before the cameras came on, and, and, and today we're going to do something a little different because we're trying to infuse this show with a little structure. Jason's been begging me for this. I always just say, whatever, let it fly. But at this point, it's like, who cares? Let's try some new shit. Jason's going to be prompting us. He's going to give us things to talk about, drop facts. You know I'm terrible. As soon as I, as soon as I turn my phone over, I just start ADDing out and shit. Um, but before before I just did it right now. Before we uh before we started the show, you guys were talking about business cards. And I guess Evan, like myself, is a collector of business cards. And I have a collection, because I am a bit of a pack rat, of business cards from the nineties of like you know, streetwear companies, artists. I have like a some Dope. old like Mr. Cartoon business cards that are really nice. That's what we're um, talking about. Mm-hmm. And I have some of my own business cards. I used to make business cards and be very proud of like, you know how they looked and and, you know it's important i mean like if you're a certain kind of person i should say it's important it's a it's a souvenir a relic a i don't know it's a total memento i mean some people collect matchbook covers bottle caps go on go on no i'm listening i'm listening (laughs) so i think (laughs) it's one of those days yeah no there's no need anymore for business cards it's very fucking analog as a matter of fact, when we were going to Vegas, the guys in the art department were like, can we get business cards? I was like, what the fuck for? What do you want? You want me to print up? Because you have to print up a thousand minimum. Right? I got a guy who does 250s. Okay, way. even 250. You had to print up 250 cards. I'm going to make them nice. Yeah. The last series of business cards I did just said like, they're around here somewhere. One of them just says. They uh, say like, suck my dick and stuff. No, they don't say suck my dick. Oh. One of them says. Um, kind of vibe though. One of them says like, I only, I only, uh, you, you don't have to leave, but go. I don't know what it fucking says. It says some. Some slogan or some something. Some smart okay. bullshit that okay. I would write. Those little white business cards. Kat, have you seen those little white square business cards that have <laughs> slogans on them in here around here? You ever seen those? Well, they exist. I was going to one day have a museum exhibit. This was my dream. This is probably not going to happen. But of business cards from the Los Angeles area. Restaurants that are no longer extant or anything like that. Or important people. LA people. Mr. Cartoon. Fucking two-tone. How dope would that be to have these business cards like displayed like in certain ways? I mean, you do it one way. Like I I was envisioning like frames and individual and like, you know, stuff like that. I think it's dope. I don't know. It's definitely... It's definitely something from an era long gone. Uh, thank you so much. But they might be even more valuable now That's because it's like it's a physical object. Re- correct. An era long gone. Like, like records. People buy records, you know? Yeah, bro, you, you, it you, is you, a souvenir. It's real. It's something for something to do. Long- Look, I collected these today, bro. These were from today at this bullshit. Ho- Not a bullshit. At this Hollywood event I went to. I was at the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce state of hollywood because i was invited it's not the type of event i would go to it's not the invite type of event i cover it was interesting there were people there and yeah like they are like you're the only man guy oh here's a card well we should do a story on blah 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 here's a card i think it's cool now i remember them now i look at them when i get back to my desk to the office and some of them that are legit you're like wow that's cool i did a story Oldest restaurant, like a business card from the Saugus Cafe, like oldest restaurant, like a business card from the 19th century. Come on, man. And in the Bay, they used to call them thisness cards. <laughs> Anybody? All right, I'll leave it alone. I heard you guys also talking about Chaka. So I remember Chaka as a kid growing up in the Valley. That was my very first memory of him. But there was always this uh, stigma, I guess, with, with tagging. You know what I mean? Because I didn't grow up in graffiti culture. Yeah. So it was like tagging. And there, it was a bad thing. Newspapers tagging is a problem. And this guy, Chaka, 10,000 tags. So it's costing the city so much money. I was looking at the old newspapers. It's like a million dollars, which, again, for me, a million dollars is a lot. But for the city, you're like, it's not that big of a problem. Right, but they're, they're that's spending what like, you're worrying about. Yes. And then they're, they're spending $3 million a night on helicopters that just don't do anything. They're putting patrol out. They're putting undercovers out to catch Chaka. And there's yeah. this one footage from an undercover cop. It was hilarious. We're like a kid, well, he was a kid, looking at the Chaka tag. And it was him, Dan. It was him. I won't say his name, but he's pointing the tag and they're like, oh, do you know who that is? And it's this cop's undercover footage. And he's like, yeah, Chaka. And he's like, do you know who that is? And then he's like, nah. And then he's like, who are you? Or what's your name? Or he's like, do you know who that is? He's like, yeah, it's Chaka. And then he's like, who are you? And he's like, says his name. 
can I say his first name? I don't yeah. Know. Daniel. Daniel. Yeah. Is it, but it's him. Yeah. But the undercover was trying to bust him, but he wasn't. That's so they sick. just, yeah. So they have that footage. Which He's all, hello, fun. fellow kid. Do you like tagging and graffiti? Who's that guy? Yes. He's like, there you go. Yeah. Thank you. Told much. I mean, I, th- I feel like the whole thing is like every, look, America itself is, the whole thing is a fucking Ponzi scheme. It's all a scam. Even having a graffiti task force to stop graffiti and like it's just another reason for the department to like to 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 spend more money and to get budgets. Like when I heard the whole thing about the helicopters, yeah, the LAPD helicopters are like they're spending them. They spend so much money keeping them afloat, and they're not even in use. They just fly them out because they got to keep their budgets going. Because the way budgets work, right? Yeah. Let's say you establish. Let's say Born and Raised establishes a budget for the art department, okay. and that art department budget is uh, I don't know. I'm going to give you guys 20k a quarter for supplies, right? Now, what happens is, at the end of the year, if you only spent 30k, then I'm taking the budget down because I don't want to spend you the only money. Need 30k. So you got to keep spending that money. Yeah. That's why everything is a fucking scam. What an interesting everything. perspective. I didn't know that. I did know Los Angeles is the helicopter capital of the Western Hemisphere. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, shout out to helicopters and uh, scamming in general, and uh, shout out to all of you who are loyal, powerful Truth Angels fans. I'm not quitting the show. LA is a is is one of the creative hubs of America, yes. right? There's there's a couple. Uh, it's LA and uh, Cincinnati and um, Cleveland. No, I'm kidding. It's LA and it's New York. I was and it's say, sh- how do you not mention Tulsa? In there? No, I don't know. I, I mean, it, it's wherever the it's wherever people are are migrating to to do stuff. I and mean, it's a bunch of places. LA is one of them. And uh, you know, and there's a lot of things happening here. Creative. There's a lot of art. I mean, the art the art scene changed here. I'd say about. 15 20 years ago i think uh maybe when maybe when art in the streets happened maybe that's what changed things i don't know if you're privy to all that stuff but what like, is art in the streets for the art in the person? streets was like one of the biggest graffiti shows and 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 i don't want to i'm pretty i think it was deitch um put it on uh I'm, I'm i'm fried so don't don't hang me in the comments here but like uh but and also i could be wrong about this but in my opinion, from what I've observed, was that LA did not have an art scene. LA did not have a good restaurant scene. LA, uh, LA didn't have, you know, f- like fashion. Uh, you know, I still don't think we have much fashion. I think we have a lot of streetwear and advertising, but not a lot of fashion. Uh, and LA didn't have a lot of these things, and that's changed a lot over the past ten to twenty years because things like we now have restaurants that are reputable and we have galleries that are reputable and, we're, and people are showing art here and we have the art fairs here. So was like, it never here or was it never exposed? Because you go back to restaurants and I was think here. about that. It wasn't here. Well, Jonathan well, Gold stuff. Jonathan Gold. Yeah. yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. So like food was absolutely here. Maybe It was not. here. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying when I say restaurants, I'm yeah. not talking about food. I'm yeah. talking about like fucking hoity-toity oh, horse shit. Yeah, yeah. Where like, all of a sudden like fucking Bon Appetit magazine yeah, yeah. is like most exciting food city last Angeles. Yeah. Okay. Me personally, yeah. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm down to eat somewhere fire. Yeah. But I'm not, I don't care about the, I don't need to be there first. I'll go there six years later. I do not care. Right. If someone's like, yo, I got a res, I'm like, let's go. Or if I'm taking someone out special, I always maybe go I'm, try it, by the way. Anybody out there, I always I'm, try yeah, it. I just don't, but new. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm down, yeah. but I don't, some people, it's really their thing. Yes. And sometimes yes. I've taken people out and they're like, <laughs> I, I took a friend out. And we went to the steakhouse and I was like, I went there because someone else took me there once. And she's like, why'd you bring me here? I was like, I don't know. It's a cool steak. It's a great steak. She's like, yeah, but it kind of sucks. And she was a friend. So she was, you know, she's an asshole. Yeah. And, um, and I was like, oh, and I was like, I guess I'd never think about like, if I find something that works for me. Yeah. Like I just go there. Like yeah. I go to I go to places that are around my house, and I'm like I just keep going. I'm like this is great. I get the same thing. I'm a creature Why of habit, not, bro. Why not? Creature of habit. Okay, so I want to address that though. As far as LA being a magnet for culture, I think historically, you can, and look, I can't speak to the art scene like this. And I've always heard these tropes and this kind of narrative. And as somebody who's been just an outside observer, fine. I mean, it sounds I would trust this man right here with that assessment. But I think as a creative center and a cultural center, it's always been a magnet, right? I mean, that's what Los Angeles is. Just A, 
drawing from every culture, right? So you start there, just the sense that Los Angeles, I mean, again, more Koreans anywhere outside of Korea, more El Salvadorians anywhere outside of uh, uh, El Salvador, more, or, sorry, more Salvadorianos outside, anywhere outside of El Salvador, more Mexicans anywhere outside of Mexico for major cities. And all these things come together. Uganda, we have a family friend that's Ugandan, more Ugandans anywhere outside of Uganda. So all these things come together and creative people can draw from that, those cultural influences, right? So I think that A, just having that as like the baseline first inspires people. And second, I gotta go back to this because this is the truth. And it's funny because I was thinking about that because I was at that Hollywood event and I stay out of Hollywood, not out of Hollywood, the city, but out of Hollywood culture, it's just not my thing. But what draws a lot of creatives throughout time has been we're the center of movies and and thus the center of attention for the world and have impacted the world and exported our culture for better or for worse so that i think draws people in from the every sector including art and yeah. every kind of culture well it also draw and that that's a good word culture because i think la has been for people that <laughs> from people on the outside they think it's light on culture <laughs> Uh, because it, Hollywood has running Hollywood isn't a culture. It's you know it is what it is. Uh, but but there is. Would deep, you say it's more a business than a culture? No, I mean the ho- movies too, are an art edgy. form, but movies are a fucking business, and it's like worshiping celebrities is stupid. So is that a culture? I don't think. I mean, yeah, sure, it's a culture. I don't fucking know. It's it's just. But either either way, you're LA, saying Hollywood as Hollywood. Yeah, Hollywood yes, has, but how, yes. but L A as a whole has rich cultures. Many of them, it's a fucking melting pot. You just have to, the, the tough thing about LA is getting into all this shit. Because if you don't know somebody, yes. like in New York, you walk outside and you've done 10 things from 10 different places with a million different kinds of people in a day without even blinking. Yeah. LA, it's like, you, you if you don't have somewhere to go, you're stuck. Like you gotta have a destination, you gotta have a car. And you're like, you know, I've, I've, I sometimes been put on to shit in LA from people coming out from New York who are like, oh, I'm going to this party. I'm like, what the fuck is this? You know, yeah. because it's yeah. very, it's very clicky, it's very segregated, and it's very spread out. When you say segregated, you mean racially segregated, or you mean like culturally? Se- not, yeah, not, not like- both. Both. Like it's like, listen, there's there's areas of town that are like, it, it's not like New York where everything's mixed in. Like everything is there's like pieces of town that are different ethnicities, and right. it's even defined more so. Like, and and a lot of people stick like the stick Byzantine together. quarter. Yeah. <laughs> like, geez, what the fuck? Sorry. Go on. No, yeah. not at all. No. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, so it's it's different. It hasn't had the same. Like, there are places that you grow up that are multi, you know, Venice was multicultural. You know, yeah. like you saw a lot of, I went to high school with everything you could ever imagine, uh, right? Yeah. But like, but not everything is like that, you know? Right. Um, and the pockets and the neighborhoods kind of stay, you know, they. it's also socioeconomic. I mean, it's a whole thing. But, you know. I'll, I'll say something that you kind of hit on at first. There's a guy in my neighborhood who was jogging and he like stopped me and he wanted to talk about L.A., and uh, I was like, so you love LA, blah, blah. He's like, yeah, but it took me a long time. It took me a long time to find my people. He said for like seven years, you want to go home. I think it was from Maryland. He said, <laughs> yeah. And he was like, for seven, but job work, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, took me seven years. But he's like, once I found my people, he's like, I was home. And he's like, I would never leave. And, he's, and he says this to me. He's like, my advice to people is like, your people are here somewhere. You just got to find You got to dig. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, that kind of goes to what you were saying in the beginning. Yeah. So, LA, you know, LA is uh, currently a, a cultural and artistic hub. And, uh, you know, it'll, it'll uh, I don't know. But I will say, listen, and I'm not going to debate, but I've always felt, and maybe I'm naive. I am naive. But I've always felt that it is not assimilated or integrated. I guess integrated, even though the word's like got a terrible kind of context where I feel like, again, I grew up in the Valley. Right. It's a boring, plain ass valley. But in my homeroom in seventh grade, I never forget that Egyptian person, Kenyan person, Mexican person, Jewish person, Korean. So I'm like, to me in LA, whether you're high on the socioeconomic pole or low, you're going to have people of every race and ethnicity in that yeah, neighborhood. And in, in, in my opinion, that I've but, seen, but right, I know that, you know, I'm not. Let's say on. this neighborhood. Yeah. Undisclosed area. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it is. Now primarily white. Okay, now it is been gentrified. Yeah. If you go that way, it's it's primarily Korean and Salvadorian and Mexican still. Uh, there's no black people living around here. There's just not. Like it it is broken the fuck up. 
Like, yeah, bro. If you really think about it, if you really get into it, like yeah. it, it is broken up and, and those lines were drawn a long time ago. Yeah. That's and true. there's a whole, you know, the red lining shit, all that fucking yeah. shit is real. And those, those, those things were set up. Like, you know, there's Ladera Heights, which yeah. is like the black Beverly Hills. Yeah. Like, you know, all that shit is like, those, there's Hills. lines that were fucking, you know, drawn and, and, and set up and there's parameters and people have lived within them here i was in um, to the, on that note my barber's from maywood so i was to asking him like what's, what's maywood like bro yeah. he's like Oof, he's like maywood's i was like what do you mean he's like put well put it this way he's like my mom moved us out of pico union in the early 90s because it's basically like the murder capital of the united states for a safer area we ended up in maywood and he's like shit was worse but he says to me, and he's half Salvadorian, half Mexican. He says to me, I don't think I talked to somebody outside of my race. He's like, I didn't see anybody outside of my race until I moved to the Valley is what he said. But he's like, and I'm, I'm being honest. He's like, I don't think I had a conversation with a black person or a white person. Yeah. He's like, until I went to, he moved to uh, uh, North Hollywood. So I'm like, that's a. That's true. That's, that's, that's to that shit. point. To yeah, that yeah, point. Yeah, but yeah. Those people that don't, you know, they don't experience other cultures and races because they're, they're landlocked you know and um i don't know i think i think that's by construct i think la is i think la was set up to be that way on purpose a long time ago yeah. and i think that sometimes those things are really hard to break those constructs that's what i was just gonna ask is it working is, is there progress being made no there's no fucking progress being made because you can't like that's pessimistic man no i'm not i'm just realistic i don't think there's i don't know progress no hell no this shit is fucked up like i i'm not pessimistic but i don't i don't think there's been any i don't think there's i think that these lines that were drawn a long time ago and i think that they i think there's shit like bro the fucking daryl gates mm. lapd mm. F- bringing in it was a daryl gates who did this he brought in southern cops because they're the most racist now that i didn't know that's oh not surprising God. based on the gates reputation and gates, some early actions, gates but yeah brought in to to manage the black Oof. folks south central Oof. he brings in the most fucking Oof. redneck racist cops from the south yeah, so then sounds. i think the a culture, lot of them are like ex-military too yeah and the culture of the lapd it's in the culture yeah. to be fucking racist so like when rodney king happened yeah that's part of the culture of the lapd and that the thing i think about now is like rodney king is a fucking scratch compared to what's happening now because we're a we're numb to it. Huh. B you see it all every day, and and D like Rodney King was like a man being beat, and that that fucking sent us into sent the city set the made the city burn down. Literally. Now you could literally like could pull up IG and see someone's head get blown off, and you're like, oh, they did it again. Like there's not even a fucking like we're so like come on, the, 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 desensitized. We're yes. just so desensitized. Like yeah. I just like and I, and it's like what do you what do you I don't know what you're supposed to do. Like I was talking to um I'm not to I'm not to I don't want to bum people out, but like. You got you got to toe the we got to toe the line like I got to we got to sell t-shirts we got to make drawings like we got to have podcasts you know I got to have a matcha right because could, like the could, world's burning can you know? I can I provide a different perspective for a sec on this and what's Netanyahu doing what's up with that guy <laughs> what's right, his let's problem it's like a crazy here let's talk about Netanyahu <laughs> hold on I just want to bring up one thing wait about can I just <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. wait you really want to get into that I mean sure Fuck. listen I I heard a theory that he started. Here's me. Here's a theory, and I'm gonna let it go. We are staying in the format, folks. We're staying in the we format. are staying <laughs> in the format. Go on. Okay. But really quick, I was told that he was about to be arrested, impeached, or whatever, mm. and he let Hamas mm. come through the border so he could start a war. Now, now listen. I, I listen. He was about to be impeached, right? And and you might think that that's crazy. I think maybe even arrested too. Don't quote me on that. But but I I try to look at, at both sides on this. Um, and the, quote unquote let is is strong language. However, I have Israeli friends. I'm yeah. Jewish, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, have, I have Israeli friends. Blah blah blah. But they're like, listen. We and they, everybody needs to uh, enlist or whatever. There's so everybody who lives a male, female. You have to serve. And they're like, I was in the military. The Israeli military does not have lapses like that. They're basically they were known that's, that's as the most about. advanced the most military fucking, in the world. Yes. And they're like, bro, if a fucking bird pooped in the wrong way yes. near the Gaza Strip, like we would know about it. Like, and the, so the fact that these motherfuckers were coming through with scooters, what was with rocket that launchers, thing? Not a they parachute. had kites. What was this thing called? The fucking like bro, paraglider. They opened the, open the doors. So, so again, to say that I don't know about that, but something. But let, a me, miss let me be in a, clear in a because major I, way. I know you can't talk about this shit, and I know I can't on any level talk about it. I'm talking about a person. Yeah. I'm not talking about Israel. Yeah. I'm not talking about Jews. I'm talking yeah. about Netanyahu. Yeah. I'm talking about a man. 
Talking about a man who is fallible, who right. does not represent the people inside that country. Just like who, whatever motherfucker is is telling me what to do. I don't. You think oh, the people that run America right. represent me on any oh, level? I'm I'm trapped in this bitch. I don't know tough. where else to go. But this shit is fucked up. This shit is fucked. Our choice is you can have a fucking Look. you can have a Whopper oh, or a Big Mac for president. Man. One of the two. They're both disgusting, poisonous, horrible things that are carcinogenic and are gonna fuck you up and make you it die. It fucking make pains you sick. me. It's terrible. I can't believe we're really getting into this, but I like it. I enjoy yeah, fuck it. it. Who but cares? listen to this. It's like, look, man, I'm like <laughs> a dying in the wool. Like my parents were hippies, yeah. liberal. Same. Dad burned his draft card, mom burned her bra, grew up fucking Democrat as possible, liberal. Again, all that. And so I've thusly like voted Democrat and like, look, I'll, I'm, I'll just say I voted Biden over Trump in 2020 it wasn't a hard decision for me. Sure. But even recognizing in 2020 that Biden was probably close to senility. And I used to throw this joke out where I'd be like, if an Uber driver showed up just for me and my wife to go out on date night, an Uber driver <laughs> showed up looking like that, I'd be like, cancel like I'll just yes. yeah, I'll just wait another and that's just an Uber driver not somebody but the other on the other hand is a guy who's showing up that's like fucking Hunter Thompson fear and loathing like get in yeah. like you remember that fucking and you're like dude I don't know about this so that's kind of the choice and now Biden's four years older Trump's fucking got the January 6th under his yeah. belt and yeah. if I mean yeah so the it's choices well, come are pretty, on. pretty the illusion of of and I'm not a it's conspiracy weird. theorist. I don't. I don't fucking you know loose change or melt steel beams, whatever. <laughs> sure, probably all real. Who cares? But anyways, uh, they, they they don't even. There's not even an illusion of choice anymore. They're not. No one else. They only let anyone else in. They only let Bernie in. The fucking guy. The Kennedy. The buff. What the fuck's his name? The buff Kennedy. Robert Kennedy. Shout out to Junior. Is he out, buff? I haven't seen his physique. Is, I, he, is he's he really? Super, is he he's like super fit? buff from what I hear. He's like he he's has on a the, man's man effect. No to him. shit. Like, okay. Okay. I mean, you know, they're not going to let that guy get anywhere near anything because the, the the structure set up. I mean, Trump. I don't know, man. It, it's it's so crazy. We're in, we're we're post idiocracy. So post like it's idiocracy would be nice. Idiocracy. I'd rather have I'd rather have that president with the fucking with the MC, with the gold M sixteens. What's his name? Macho Rambo or the fucking name is. Huh? Kamala or something? The guy in Idiocracy. Yeah, the yeah. fucking Our, Terry, Terry, uh, Terry Crews. President rather, Kamala or something like that. Give me Terry Crews. Elect, elect fucking Ricky in the art department. I would have more faith in Ricky Bro, it's than crazy. Biden or Trump. Like, are it's, you kidding me? It's legit. And I never believe. I always look. I believe in our system. I, I take a lot of gut for that. I really do feel that America, California, Los Angeles have gotten to a certain point. Hella flawed. Completely a lot of failures, but again, compared to many societies, I feel like there have been a lot of successes to get to this point. So I like to believe in the quote unquote system, but the older you get and the more you see it and just these things were like, again, and, and I got to bring this up. This is a perfect example of this Hollywood thing I was at. It was the state of the state of Hollywood and a, a political figure was speaking and they're, the deal is they want to have the businesses in Hollywood, important like Hollywood business people talk and ask questions. What's going on with crime? What's going on with homelessness? What are you doing about it? My shop was broken. You hear about these restaurants getting fucking demolished and not just vandalized, but registers stolen, $80,000 worth of damage, oh, yeah, yeah, El Zarape, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, and they're like, well, you know, like, da, 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 here's the process and like contact my office and blah, blah. And I'm like, motherfucker. Like, well, you know, and you know, it has to work a certain way, but like, you're like, that's like, okay, yeah, here, contact. Okay, cool. cool. If you, you want to if you want a police response at this point, you have to cut someone's head off and <laughs> FaceTime them with the head in your hand. Fuck. That's how you get the Fuck. cops to maybe come. Yeah. You know why they're doing that? They're standing down so we vote Republican. They don't give a fuck. They're pissed off because of the fucking BLM shit. They're pissed off because of all that stuff. And they're like, okay, fuck it. You don't need us. You want to defund us? So We're taking away the helicopters. So, <laughs> you know, they're like, listen, we, we, we need our helicopters because... We have to cruise and helicopters are fun. So I don't even know if I can put the thing that I just said to you about all that stuff. Like I have a business, yeah, right? Yeah. When I see when I see the videos, it makes me it's so I'm it's so terrible and I don't even know what to do with it because I cannot. It's not my job. I'm not a fucking journalist. I'm not here to educate people and I have a business to run and I do not want to get caught in some sort of like. And I'm not going to affect anything with my fucking opinion. Don't give a shit. And I'm not going to get caught in some sort. Like I'm, not, let's say I get a couple hundred thousand people to agree with me. Nothing's going to happen. It's all we're we're in it. It's done. We're cooked. And like, but, uh, but but it, it, it makes me question whether or not I can say anything because anything I say can be misconstrued and they can go. 
that motherfucker is this now and then I'm labeled or something and then all of a sudden like I'm putting in jeopardy with the careers of you know 20 people and myself so it's like you know um it's fucked up dude. and like we're all we're all caught in this uh we're all we're all in the machine we're pushing the wheel around we're all conan pushing the giant can wheel. i ask you something yeah you opened the show and he said you didn't <laughs> you didn't sleep that well yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. is this a byproduct of yeah. your lack of sleep yeah, yeah. because I, I when you came on my podcast yeah you were such a bundle of positivity <laughs> i'm not gonna say roses and butterflies yeah, yeah, yeah. but like and look this is an absolutely intelligent, like off the charts, intelligent, charming individual right here, right? right? So, but the energy today feels a little it's bit dark. on the neck. Yeah, a little dark. I mean, yeah. so um, is that a sleep? Is that a I'm, repercussion of the lack of sleep? I have not. He's going had... out too much. Stop making this man go out at night. Let him get his sleep. Guys, Be much let, more positive impact guys, on the world. let me get some sleep, everybody. Stop <laughs> making me go out. Um, I haven't had a, a solid eight hours in a long time, but... And I'm usually ha I usually get by six thirty seven, but the past three nights, yeah. Last night I took myself to bed like a good boy at a normal time. I was in bed by like midnight ish, eleven thirty midnight, okay. eleven thirty. And I, yeah, but I, I haven't. Been, I keep waking up at six because I am like you know, I am under. Pre I don't mind being under pressure. I'm just acknowledging it. I like being under pressure. You thrive. I on thrive. It. And this is why I said it's a good thing. You said yeah. it's not a good thing. Maybe it's not because of the sleep. But the thing is, there are people that I know that don't have that mental hunger. Yeah. And let me sleep nine hours, ten hours. And I'm like, dude, I think it's for me. I'm somebody who prizes productivity. Yeah. And for accomplishing things, whatever that is in your life. And yeah, but when problem, you're like, you're getting up and going. I'm like, yes, more power to you. Let's go. But that's so here's what happens. Yeah. Let's say I go to bed at two. Yeah. My eyes pop open at six. Then what I do yeah. is I try to reclaim that time and get an extra hour in. And then I push things. I'm like, well, okay, now I'm not going to go to jiu-jitsu at this class. I go to the next class. And then I'm in the gym. And then my exercise is not as good. Yeah. And then I come in here and then I'm cranky. Then I then I scream at Kat for like 30 minutes at a time in her face, just screaming, yelling, yelling about the environment, yelling about GMO, food processing. Where's my fucking matcha? Where's my Splenda? Don't give me Splenda. It gives me cancer. Give me real sugar. Give me liquid sugar. Give me raw cane sugar. What the fuck are you wearing today? You're wearing all Black, you had bangs yesterday. You don't have bangs today. Why are you wearing boots? What's going on? What's going on in your, in your romantic life? You want to talk about my life? Let's talk about yours. Oh, that's really complicated. That's what I do to cat. <laughs> Her mouth is wide open. No, I don't do that to cat. But I, I'm a. I'm, you can't get your time back. <laughs> that's. <clears throat> uh, Jason. Jason wants me to do. He wants. Jason keeps urging me to go yeah. back to. We used to do what we call a boneless show. Wait, where it's boneless. Boneless. But basically, what that is is me. No guest in my mouth. And I did it so many times that it broke me. And I said, I can never do it again because I have to sit here and just just vamp for yeah. fucking 90 minutes. Just going. Blah, 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 blah. And like when you do that, you end up divulging. She's like, you end up talking about shit you shouldn't talk about. You end up repeating yourself a million times, which I've done on this. I've, I think I've just I think everything on this podcast is at this point like a recycled. People sentence. like stories repackaged, though. I like they so. want to hear you tell your stories. They want to hear new stories, but they love hear, hearing your stories. That's the truth. Call to action right now, everybody. This is my first call to action ever that wasn't paid for. Here's my call to action. Anyone out there in the podcast universe, okay, I'm talking to you. Um, anyone out there has any ideas for how we can revamp, revitalize, and inject some life into this podcast? Because I'm burnt, and I need to figure out how to make this thing a little more exciting. Tell us what you want from this show. No, no, no. I don't want I don't want I don't want your fucking opinions. I want professionals. I want someone who knows what they're doing to go, "Hey, Tuton, I see what you're doing. I'm a fan. Here's what I do. I got some ideas for you. Do you want to partner? Can, can I talk to you sure, about talk, this? Talk Since me, I mean, I feel me like here, in a minute with Evan Lovett, by the way. Make sure you're following. In a minute with Evan Lovett. on the last one. With Evan Lovett. It's a great episode. But here's the deal. I don't know that you'll do this, and I know you don't have the bandwidth to do this, but you can have somebody fucking do this. Okay. Script. Not a script like you're thinking, but just like bullet points or things you're going to cover, and you stick to your... Listen to this. This is fucking crazy. You want to hear neurotic? I used to have a friend, Washington... He's still my friend, but we became friends in Washington, D.C. First time we ever fucking hung out. I show up at his place, dope pads, like in Southeast Quadrant. Like he lived literally underground. It was dope. We were in smoke weed, all this stuff. He had a fucking agenda. 
And we're like, fr- I'm, we're not like a burgeoning friendship, right? But it's like, as if I'm going to, and I was like, wow, that's fucking formal. This is going to be like a hey, real agenda fun, for your fun. hangout sesh. So here's the deal. And I was like taking it back, right? I was taking it back. <laughs> but like since then, and we're still friends. Dude, we're st- flash forward, we're still friends like 25 later. We have a quote unquote agenda. It's not written like this, but it helps you get to the stuff you want to cover. Like Jason says today, we're going to do this blah, 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 art, whatever the fuck LA thing, right? But if you got those three items right there in front of you, you can go off and do your two-tone stuff and have your tangents and talk about Netanyahu, talk about sleep, talk about going out. But then you're going to circle back and get, you're looking at that like, oh shit, that's right. I did want to talk about that. And that keeps on. And he has time. Like, I don't know how long you're trying to do. 90 minutes, fucking 30 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever it is. He's like, yo, 20 minutes, we're running out. So he keeps you on the flow. But these are three things you want to cover. And you kind of have a feel, a flow to your show. Whether it's intro, the meat, and the outro, or whatever. Just the three segments we're going to do today. But that's... L- literally what we're doing today. Yeah. And I'm so f- I'm such a fucking spaz. <laughs> I'm so ADD the fuck out. Yeah. That I just decided to yell about a fake argument a fake one-sided argument i have with cat like i'm insane so and also also point number two it's great to have you on because you really carry a lot of the weight and point number three (laughs) your friend that had an agenda written out for your hang sesh for your first hang sesh do the words insanely severe autism ring a bell with you that is the crazy that is crazy. Hey man, one time I had a sleepover when I was a kid. One of the first sleepovers I had, I wrote out an agenda. I had the whole night planned <laughs> oh, out. Right. There <laughs> what are you go. trying to say? Not that there's anything wrong but, with but neurodivergency. Two <laughs> <don't> true thing. <laughs> <laughs> and agenda, like what is on the agenda like at four o'clock we're gonna have grilled cheese okay at like, six o'clock we're gonna explore our boners like what the uh, fuck are you yeah. guys doing but think we're about do this drawing. how many times have you hung out with a friend that you haven't seen in a long time and then you fucking go home that night you're like oh shit i didn't even talk to him about whatever the fuck so it's just like a cheat sheet it's like crib notes of like <laughs> oh yeah fuck? dude i haven't seen it in a while let's that is discuss. the craziest thing i've ever heard or you heard forgot about. like let's say it's a football nobody's talking about super bowl right now but you haven't seen your buddy since the super bowl and he's a chiefs fan so you want to be like oh dude good work on this i mean just to address it i'm just cliff saying. notes on the hang sesh i'm just saying uh, i thought it was more like just to avoid smoking weed and not like watching stuff the whole time like because oh, that's no, that's a no. hole that's easy to fall into with to friends you, you just you, kind of you sit two around peas in a pot or I guarantee you we could ask everybody in this office if they've ever taken notes for a hang sesh. <laughs> Listen, it was one time on my dinosaur chalkboard when I was like six. It does sound crazy. It's sound- Okay, six it. o'clock makes it. sense. I'm sorry. Six years six o'clock. Six years old makes sense. Uh but um I had to learn to stop doing that because then you create expectations. But you cover everything you needed to cover, though. Which brings mm-hmm. me back to what I was going to say. Yes. You know, the LA is experiencing a lot of strife. Our nation is experiencing a lot of strife. But what effect do you think that will have on art moving forward, creativity? You can see in LA, there is a skyscraper that was covered in graffiti. They're calling it the Graffiti Museum. So as you can see, like there, there are tangible results in the creative world, artistic world from this kind of strife. People also say that Trump has made comedy worse, for example. Oh, that's factual. So. Trump has made comedy worse? Yeah. What? How? Stand-up comedy is fucking tanked since Trump. Because it, it's a certain thing. Because he's too funny? This. No, not. <laughs> I mean, kind Good of. Because he's a like little so bit. funny. That- but also like parody ceases to exist and satire almost ceases to exist and because he owns it all yeah he basically he basically owns satire because he is sat- like yes. it's too insane right like there's yeah. no there's nothing that can be surreal anymore because he's as surreal as correct. he gets correct the there's gold fucking shoes yeah the gold sneakers yeah and then fat joe's like i bought the sneakers i you know we're we're living in like this is this is my theory is that when they turned on that hydron collider about 15 oh, years ago it, it augmented reality and we're stuck in an alternate reality because shit is fucking bananas thank you for bananas the date on that the i say we're in earth 2.0 I've, I've been for fucking i said since it's 2016 reality we know this. nobody wants back to, to this it. date Maybe i want to go back to that date bro because yeah. i've been i've been throwing out when was the hydron collider when what was the date on that any any producers we have two producers in here no one's like i say a, i say a juicy fucking keyword like hydron collider <laughs> i should hear motherfuckers typing their brains out i get nothing jason's just looking off into space cat is like googling find socks. that find that date but can i give just a very basic answer which yeah. really is my genuine answer though about art and strife and all this kind of stuff i've always said i've been asked what period 2008 sorry for the late Ooh, no that's about right bro 13 years 
And you know what? No, 15 He's, years. 16. Wait, 16 years. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy. Some This is what blows my mind about myself. Yeah. Is that sometimes my brain, as stupid as I am, works and, and knows that that thing was 15 years ago. And I don't know how. Because I can't, I couldn't tell you what I, what I did yesterday. Biggest, but somehow it knows the Hydron Collider was 15 years ago. Biggest lesson I learned from my wife is, and not from her, but like being with her on conversation stuff is everybody has different kinds of intelligences, yeah. man. And it's like, look, I, I don't want to simplify doing people smart people. I don't know that that really exists in the sense that everybody has something or some things that they know or they do better. They're just innately more intelligent about. And it's not stuff that's measurable or something you can get compensated on sometimes, but there's something or some things out there. But also to be completely fair, there's a lot of dumb motherfuckers out there. Yeah. There's a lot of trucks. There's I a said, lot of trucks. There's a lot of dumb trucks out there. Dude. You know, there are some people that you're just like, you know, they just get, they're just not there. And it's, and I think it's some of that is like, you just have different, you're born with a different set of memory. Different RAM, RAM. right? Mm -hmm. You had a different, like, mm -hmm. you were set up with different RAM, and this person just doesn't have the RAM. And what no was the date? Not the year, the date? Hydrogen Collider? What's it called? Hydron, the Hydron about. Collider. It was, really it, was, um, <laughs> it was September of 2008. And interestingly, Obama That's went into office. Uh, elected November, November. Elected for. November, office January of 2009. So that's it. Cause I always go back to Trump getting elected, but that was a result of Obama getting elected. So things were fucked up in the world. Fuck, like bro. things were fucked up in the world on, on a certain level, but like post Hydron Collider, we, we slipped into an, I'm just wow. going to claim that we slipped into an alternate reality because, and, and like we, yeah, everything shifted mm -hmm. and we're in a, we're in the wrong timeline because my brain cannot handle what's happening. And no, it can. The, here's the, here's the thing. It totally can handle it because I just I'm really good at disassociating. I just go, oh, it's fine. We're gonna just keep going. Everything's fine. Is that different than compartmentalizing? Because I feel I'm very good thing. at compartmentalizing. It's the same. Shit. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm compartmentalizing. Yeah. Hold okay. on. I want your answer to the question because <laughs> yeah. I want to give my basic ass answer. Sure. 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 Is if I I was always asked if I could go back in time in L.A. history, where would I go? And it's super. Now the answer is different, but it used to always be the fucking '60s because of fucking free love and Woodstock and the best fucking music. You know, I'm not. The guy that's rolling around with like classic rock, but my dad was Jimi Hendrix, Doors, all that kind of shit, uh, The Who. And when you hear that, whether or not that's your thing, you're like, this is such evocative music. Like, however you want to, and it's been kind of fucking bullshitted, used in all these movies and like in corny senses. But like, no, that music is a direct result of what's going on at that time in society and culture. So to answer your question, I feel like, fuck yeah, you're probably getting some absolutely. Here's, like, here's my time machine. Here's, yeah. here's what I request. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the computer and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type in uh, 1987. I'm Don Simpson, but 1987 pre-AIDS. So I'm Don Simpson, 19, you guys know who Don Simpson is? Simpson Bruckheimer, produce, producer of like Top Gun, died okay. in a swimming pool. Uh, but but it would basically be the 80s where you could live on the edge of a fucking razor and you were applauded for it and you were super rich. It would be me living in Miami Vice as a fucking... And then, and then the thing is like I would be able to merge out of that because I would get out right when AIDS hits and you have to start wearing condoms. Can we talk about condom use, everybody? Safe sex. Fuck it. Who cares? And what effect do you think that's had on art? Condom use? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think. I don't no, but I, I do, really want I do. your answer. I really uh, want your answer, though, because yeah. I know you're going to have a fucking legit ass answer. I would I would go to the 80s. No, of the strife, his question. Oh. For the all, the all the civil strife, human strife. Are better, LA worse. Specifically, yeah. yeah. Particularly in LA. What is What effect is that going to have on the art culture? I think the, the days of... of of making art as a protest have, it's never going to be like it, protest art doesn't really work. Right. Uh, it can be, there can be messaging in there that is like part of the tapestry, but like, you know, painting a replica of the, the, the girl in, in Vietnam who had napalm on her and she's on the road, you know, that little, that famous picture, like painting that as a painting now is like, <clears throat> No one gives a shit. So you could paint everything that's happening in the Middle East. And as a painting, everyone would be like, yeah, whatever. Because we're seeing it. We're desensitized. So art as a protest, I don't. And I, again, I'm just some fucking complete asshole. And I'm not an art critic. I don't have a pedigree in art. But I will say that I don't think that that. I think that the, the ways of protesting via art are going to be a little more subliminal. And I think it's like if you want to protest as an artist, right? Let's say you want to protest. Let's say you're a blue chip artist. Yeah. Let's say you're a big motherfucking swinging dick, blue chip. You know, like 
you're the guy. You want to protest and throw some money at some shit. Buy some fucking, buy some kids some water. Uh, you know, get go send some, put a well in fucking Uganda. I don't know. Go fucking save some motherfuckers. The, the art, the art, or, or, you know, have a show and put all that money somewhere and don't even say nothing about it. Just fucking do it. You know what I mean? How about that? That's protest. Because everything else is kind of like, you're just, it's just horseshit. It's for Instagram. There's still got to be a way to reach people though. Like that. Maybe the art is just different. The medium. No, we're getting, we're getting, I just watched a fucking, I just watched on CNN on my phone, like them letting off on people trying trying to get eight like letting off on trucks of people trying to eat food like it's fuck we're cooked like no it's i just saw what do you that. mean letting off what like like drone footage of them shooting into trucks as people are trying to get food out of them like i just saw that this morning like that's i like dude there's there's nothing that's as that's as crazy as you, like you, you're saying you, you don't need the art to draw attention to that that no, draws because, attention to itself yeah, it's before, self-evident we see it all the time all day we're inundated with it we're being fried I'm being fr- I mean, fucking. My phone has got me. F- my phone is fucking me right up the ass it's and frying true. my brain. My phone is Eiffel Tower me on a daily basis. There's, there's two iPhones and I'm bookended and I have no choice <laughs> and I'm getting hit from both sides and I'm just like and I'm taking it every day for seven hours a day, just getting fucking smoked. That's what my phone does, and that and 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 specifically, you know, probably eighty percent of that. Is All Instagram. right, <laughs> let me ask you. Let me ask you something. What what gets you up then? What you obviously get up. Oh. You have a look, bro. Oh, what you makes- have a very not cheery, but a good disposition. Yes. Okay. So what gets you? I'm, it listen, can't I'm, be. I'm underslept, yeah. so I go. I run a little dark, but I'm yeah. generally these days, and I've had to. This has not always been my disposition. I feel great. Yeah. There's a lot of hard shit happening. There's a lot of stresses in my life. Mm-hmm. I feel personally, I feel fantastic because the one thing in my life. That has been the defining North Star my entire fucking life. Yeah. The only thing that's ever made any sense to me is trying to do creative shit. Trying to make films, trying to make fucking t-shirts, trying to make art, fucking doing prank calls. And why do you do that? Do you do that for you or do you do that for the world? I do it because it's the only way that I know that I f- that I will that, that I exist. It's the only way I can define that I'm actually on this planet to myself. And it's the only way I can prove to myself that like there's any worth in my body. You create something, you prove to yourself I don't have, that there's worth. If I don't I don't have a choice. If you sit if you if I worked at Staples, yeah. the entire and I, let's say I would be the manager, let's just say that. The entire the entire office would be covered in fucking doodles all day. I cannot help myself. I am like like I can't I'm if I'm not doing that, I'm writing. Like I I have it, it is just, I've been like this forever and it took me a very long time to figure out how to funnel it and harness yeah. it. Because for a long time, it was just trapped in me and I couldn't get it out. Yeah. I spent I spent years just frozen being like, how do I, how do I, how do I, how do I? And I finally did it, I was like, okay, let's go. So now I'm just like, blah, 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 blah. And, like and my thing is like, I'm just getting it all out and trying to come to some sort of a, there's no end to it. But if I do something that makes someone emote or feel happy, yes. or like someone that I respect is like, hey, that was sick. That fills me up. Like that's my that's yeah. my that's how I get love. You okay. know? So which is like Okay, so check this out, out, right? And let, let's talk about born and raised for a second. Sure. You've touched a lot of fucking people, created or extended, however you want to say, a culture that has really had a positive impact on this city, literally going anywhere in Los Angeles and beyond yeah. the world. Yeah. Okay. So you're an artist who has created something that has had an impact. Yeah. Who is to say art can't have that impact, whether even as a result of politics? Yours? I think born and raised has had an impact. Yes. And I will say just by this, I will say just, here's why. I'll say, here's why born and raised had an impact. Here's what I think. I think born and raised was Sponto and I, we got together and like, you know, we're we we don't come from we're not pedigreed you know like yeah i went to college you know i dropped out and like but i i had a checkered fucking life like i was a mess for a long time swanto had his life too check out the two-tone episode of intermittent check with that. i love it great check origin story with yeah. this this guy goes deep go and i think that when we did is like we had we were very uh I think we we're really honest and we shot from the hip and we did what felt right. Mm-hmm. And we didn't really have uh, an actual plan or agenda as to how it was going to make it through. We just were making shit all the time. Swanto was fucking bombing billboards, 
you know, when he was going to chemotherapy that said Spondo Tutone because that's what he did. You know, like I, you know, I was locked up fucking doing all the designing and trying to tell stories with film. And it was all, I think we told a very authentic from the heart story, not because that we were trying to fucking signal or we were trying to like, this is our, it wasn't our angle. It's just yeah. what we do. Like, yeah. it's just how we did it. So go. I think that alone probably inspired. And we, and we looked to people that, look like us that come from the places that we came from and we brought them in the fold and we hired them and we worked with them and we cast them as models. And I think all of that, yeah. I think definitely had an influence on, cause I'm seeing it now because I don't understand. I have no concept of time past a certain age. So when I meet someone, they're like, damn, you're an OG. I'm like, I'm no, I'm not. I'm, I'm actually 28 I'm in my mind. I'm young, fucking right? like, terrible, but no, I'm, I'm, true, I'm dude. old, dude. Yes. I'm old. And yeah. like 10 years, 10 years to me isn't a long time anymore. But 10 years to someone who is 32 is crazy. And they're like, yo, they've been there's people that have been watching this shit for 10 years. They watched us from day one to now. And they're looking at us from scrambling to make a t-shirt, you know, and, and make it work to like doing a collab with NASCAR, you know, or fucking whoever. And I think that they in us being just normal guys that aren't like full of shit i don't think we are or were uh i think they i think that they see in us some of themselves and like that is influential and i do think that that's why born and raised means a lot to a lot of people and i, I see that but I, it took me a long time to figure it out until yeah. i like because dude also born and raised this company this this thing that the born and raised has been one of the hardest, most grueling jobs I've ever had in my life because there was no delineation between my life and Sponto's life and the company and right. the people in the company. It was just pfft, like motherfucking, like it was in my house. It was like in my back room. It was like we it were was just, you, we man. were in each yes. other's shit. And it's been like, you know, we were like, we'd fight, we'd fucking not fight, we'd agree, we'd disagree. It was fucking crazy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that, but it, it's been it's been a while. And you created art that impacted people and changed the world, even yeah. in this society where we're all desensitized and phones Eiffel Tower and us at fucking all hours of the day. Yeah. Well, there was a message. So, he, he came up with a message. I I I emphasize with it. He he came up with the message, the gentrification message. Right. And I was like, fuck yes. Yeah. Let's go because I believed in it too, and I've always been a little bit of like. When you really get down to it, I've always been more on the side of like, like, fuck this shit. Fuck you. I'm going to do me. And yeah. I mean that on the level of like, fuck you because I can't buy a house where I grew up. And fuck you because like, you know, whatever the fuck's going on. Like, you know, I, I've always been a little disgruntled with shit, but that's in my nature. <laughs> and, uh, and that's where he's come from, too. And, uh, you know, I think that that. I think that that influenced what we do. And then I think that that's also influenced like brands that came after us where they're like, oh, now everything is like connected to some sort of like idea. And, and a lot of it is also at the end of the day too, a lot of it's bullshit. Like I'm not saying that we're bullshit. I'm not saying other brands are, but like I feel like there's a lot of bullshit out there's there. There's a lot of bullshit. Like these big, really big companies life. have to align themselves with whatever's happening in the cultural zeitgeist because oh, they, they're terrified man. of being abandoned or canceled. So like, you know, if Fuck. fucking, what I don't a know. Weird concept. What a weird society that makes, bro. Right. Like Burger King's like, oh shit, we got to make sure now that, Suck. you know, let me tell you something. If it went the other way, if we were living in a fucking fascist <laughs> uh, state, then the advertising would go that way too. Whatever it takes to get their fucking, you think they give a fuck? Do you think that? Do you think that these companies would be inclusive if if the general consensus was like that fascism was was the law of the land and like that everyone wasn't equal and you know whatever the fuck people are pretending to believe in? Like no, they would be doing it would be fucking white power chicken commercials. Like they don't give a fuck. <laughs> companies are like these corporations are gigantic soulless monstrous machines and their only thing is to just grow and metastasize and get bigger like that's their only purpose right of a company the only purpose of a company like except for like patagonia patagonia throttles their sales takes their fucking they do they throttle their sales they take their employees on like a two-month fucking uh trip like they can't because the guy is like who gives a shit like how much fucking money do you fuckers need Good. how much money do Didn't you need that, you don't need that much money like you need more money now than you ever used Panda to. Panda like, Express, by the way, is a similar company. I mean, maybe not in that regard, but very philanthropic. Treat their employees well. Great, like family run. Even though it's a huge corporation, yeah, that is very conscious. Of that just want to say that also, LA company. First one was at Glendale Gall Galleria, but go on. I love when you know when I hear about someone like Patagonia. Yeah. They recycle their shit. 
They stand by what they do. They let their employees off for a couple months. Yeah. They go on, they go on surf trips together. Like why, why can't things be that way? You know, Darius is always trying to get me. He's always like, and I, and I've started to listen to him, but he's always like, Darius is always pulling me aside and be like, Hey, Hey fool, fucking let's make, let's cook tomorrow. Let's cook Friday. And like, sometimes I'm freaked out and I'm like, what are you talking about? And sometimes I stop and listen to him. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Because it's all going to be fine. Right. We're going to be fine. Yes. We're going to we're gonna be okay. Everything's going to be fine. We're all going to die. We're all going to be covered in oil. We're all going to be fighting for Skittles and the fucking apocalypse. You know, we're going to be like, I, I don't know what post is. I don't know what's going to happen after the iPhone, but like, we're fucked. <laughs> I don't know. This is what happens when you don't get, when I don't get sleep. This is, you get some of just the best content. Cut, cut this into 40 clips and let's go viral tomorrow. Okay.